Jennings. So they go to the, the big man again, Cassiano. He gets it away, the bounce favourable, and Parrott goes in. Let's start with the 55th minute uh, forward pass in the Bulldogs match on Friday night. Can you just explain the ruling around this? Yeah, I certainly can. Um, obviously, we had a good start over the first couple of weeks, but in relation to the decision on uh, Friday night, uh, there was a, a call by the uh, touch judge for a forward pass. Uh, Matt Cheshen was of the belief that the ball was touched by Parramatta and knocked back. He started with a live decision of try. The uh, decision was then referred to the bunker and they were to determine uh, whether or not the ball was touched by Parramatta. They cleared that, they went back to what the original decision of forward pass was and they subsequently ruled no try on field. So it wasn't actually the bunker that ruled on the forward pass? No, the bunker doesn't have the ability to rule on forward passes and they didn't do it on this occasion. So going forward, I guess, in future, if there's a similar situation, how do you see that would play out? Yeah, and it was an on-field breakdown. Um, the referee should have started with a no try uh, because he had the, the, the call of the touch judge for a forward pass. And the touch judges are responsible for forward passes. Uh, they advise the referees, if he started with no try, check the uh, touch by Parramatta or the potential touch and subsequently the no try would have been uh, confirmed. Well moving on, James Gave was put on report for this tackle in the Warriors match. Was that the correct decision? Uh, no it wasn't. Um, there's a wrapping motion um, by the player and he's entitled to make that type of tackle. Subsequently it shouldn't have been penalised or placed on report. And just to clarify, the bunker did say it wasn't reportable? Yeah, the bunker can only get involved in foul play if uh, incidents are reportable. They determined it was not, um, but the penalty should not have been given. Okay, and there were a few obstructions from the weekend as well. Two from the Knights match and also the one from the Warriors match that was quite a big talking point. Yeah, in relation to obstruction, we've stayed really strong on that in the last couple of years. Uh, the rules hasn't ch hadn't changed in 2016 and won't, um, and all those decisions were correct. If a sweep runner catches on the inside of the decoy runner and runs behind, uh, that's an obstruction. If a decoy runner stops in the line, which occurred in the Newcastle game, and in impedes a defender, that's also an obstruction. So they were corrected calls. Well, there's been some pressure around the live decision-making process and given the technology here at the bunker is so good, is there a need for referees to make live decisions? Yeah, there certainly is. Um, there's three examples out of round two where uh, even with the available angles and the ability of the technology here, we're not in a position to see the ball being grounded. The live decision where the referee is in a better position um, is needed for the decision to be made. Um, also, there's a player nodding shot on an offside, and in that occasion, the live decision of being onside was required to uh, formulate the final decision. Okay, well, thanks for joining us, Tony. No problems.